Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap on today. Hallelujah. The author and finisher of our faith on today. Hallelujah. Didn't we have an awesome time in the Lord this morning? On Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. And it's still Pentecost. Hallelujah. It's Pentecost every day for the believer of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want to welcome everybody that's watching by Facebook and YouTube out to your nine and holding this deliverance temple where the people that do know that God should be strong and do exports. And we are under the leadership of Apostle Harry Rogers and First Lady Rogers. Hallelujah. And I definitely believe if you do give the man of God a chance, matter of fact, if you give the Lord a chance and come into this ministry and just give the man of God a chance just to hear him, I believe that your faith will definitely be built because my faith has been built under this ministry Hallelujah. And I'm um, not going to prolong the time. Hallelujah. I do want to get into a quick word of prayer. So let's stand to our feet for prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to magnify you, God, for another time in your presence, God. Thank you for being in your house, oh God. God, hallelujah, God. This is the place to be, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we were just able, God, to make it here this night, God. We thank you, Lord God, for how you just shown yourself strong and mighty in our lives all day today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing right now. We thank you, Lord God, for what you already have on your heart and mind, God, to speak unto your people, Lord God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray, God, that I'm just able to convey that, Lord God, on tonight in the name of Jesus through your word, oh God. God, I ask God that you help me, Lord God, be able to get this word out, God, the way that you desire for it to be, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, come alive in my preaching, Lord. Come alive, God, through the word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Come alive through our praises, oh God. Have your way in this place, God. Have this tendency. Have your way, God, in this atmosphere, Lord God, because, God, we truly need you, Lord God. And God, so Someone needs a word from you tonight, God. Someone, God, is looking for some strength tonight, God. And God, if you can just use me, Lord God, to give somebody some strength, oh God, I will give you the praise, God, for every bit of strength that they get on tonight, God. Hallelujah, God. We glorify you, God, for this house, oh God. Hallelujah, where your anointing abides, oh God. And we magnify you, God, for what you're going to do, God, in the lives of those that are going to hear your word on tonight, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Man, he's, he's better than good. I just think about God when I'm in my long time with him and how good he is, how he just comes in and ministers to you. Nobody knows like you know. Hallelujah. And you're a long time between you and God. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the beauty of this, that you can have a personal relationship with him outside of the house of God. That's the beauty of Jesus Christ. He truly is a friend that stick closer than a brother. Hallelujah. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the title of the message on tonight, and it is, The Devil Pushed Me Into a Praise. The Devil Pushed Me Into a Praise. He pushed. And any time that you get pushed, it's on force. It's something that's sometimes unexpected. You didn't know you was going to get pushed. You end up getting pushed into it, and just like the word of God say, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Sometimes when you get pushed, you get pushed so hard that, it, that you fall. Hallelujah, when you fall into divers temptations. He didn't say fall into sin. He said divers temptations. Sometimes the devil's going to push you into a place, and you're going to be like, how in the world did I get here, and why am I faced with all of these different opposition? There's so many things that are coming up against me. There's so many avenues that I can take. There's so many, hallelujah, thoughts that I can grab a hold to, hallelujah, and see myself, you know, hallelujah, grabbing a hold to and going down with. But hallelujah. Let me let you know something. When God, hallelujah, when God allows the devil to push you, hallelujah, let him push you into a praise. And I hope to convey that on tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to be coming out of the book of 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. The 19th chapter, verses 1 through 18. That is 1 Samuel. The 19th chapter, verses 1 through 18. And also, too, after that, we're going to get uh, Psalms 59, 16 through 17. Once again, that second um, portion that we're going to read out of is Psalms 59, 16 through 17. And when you have 1 Samuel 19, 1 through 18, say amen. Amen, reader. And Saul spake 
to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art. And I will commune with my father of thee and what I seek, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he had not sinned against thee, and because his works have not, and his works have been to thee ward very good. Hold on, hold on, reader, just for a second. Jonathan told Saul his father, because he has not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to to the word uh to the word very good his works been towards you been good he was letting his father know that david haven't did anything to cause you to want to do him any harm right. david and everything that he has done the works you know there have been some good works you know you can see good character in him there's nothing faulty about him there's nothing that you should be worried about you know you shouldn't be trying to conspire anything against him because I mean this man hasn't did anything to deserve what you're bringing up against him and just like I was saying about being pushed David was being pushed and he never did anything he's being pushed and he didn't he doing he didn't do anything to cause him to be pushed but he was being pushed Rita keep reading for he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then will thou sin against innocent blood, to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul swore, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things, and Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence, as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out, and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter. And they fled from him, and the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin, javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. A reader stop for a second. And you said an evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. And I was thinking about this. An evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. And we know Saul. He disobeyed the commandment of God and didn't kill all of the Mal Malachites that God told him to wipe out. He didn't kill them because of the people. He feared the people more than he feared God. And then he started doing some stuff that he wasn't supposed to do. He was not a Levite. He was a child of Benjamin. And he went ahead and made a sacrifice because of what everybody else was pushing him to do. And you know that he ended up basically getting the kingship taken away from him. But God allowed him to stay in that kingship. But hallelujah, his kingship was taken away. The kingdom was taken away from him as the prophet Samuel had told him. And God gave him an evil spirit. He basically was a backslidden king. And the evil spirit was from the Lord. And I was thinking about that. Now, David is dealing with a man that got an evil spirit upon him. And the spirit is from the Lord. And God anointed David to be king. And David is God's anointed. And he got an evil, uh, evil spirit from the Lord. It's coming against him. So it's like God's coming against David. Remember what I was talking about being pushed? God's behind the scene of everything. And I was thinking of just to bring it out a little bit more, to give a little more understanding to it. You remember Job? Uh -huh. yeah. How the devil 
came to God and said, you know, I've been walking up to and through down the earth. I've been looking for someone that I can get my hands on. And he said, how you consider my servant Job? And he said, yeah, I've been looking at him, but man, I see a hedge around him. I see a great bit of protection around him that I can't fully get my hands on him. I see him. I really want to try him because I don't like the type of character that he's displaying. He resembles too much of you, and I really want to put my hands on him. But you got a hedge upon him. So God would definitely, hallelujah, allow the, he allowed the devil to do something just to get you right where you, where he wants you to be. And he gave the devil permission to go out to Job. And see, let me tell you something. God and I said, see, the devil, hallelujah, see, with Jesus, oh, God, hallelujah. I'm calling on his name. I've been calling name in, in prayer. Oh, God, help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God, hallelujah, saw that David, had, saw that Saul had turned his back on him, he put that evil spirit upon him. That evil spirit was not only there just to plague, hallelujah, Saul, but that evil spirit was there to push David into his destiny. That evil spirit was put upon him to put David into a place where he would be able to know God in a greater way and he would be able to get into the place that God has anointed him for. Hallelujah. You know, Rita, I'm, I'm going to read the rest. I feel good now. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand. And David played with his hand. He was playing the harp. And at times, class, he would play the very devil out of Saul. But this time, God allowed, hallelujah, the devil to get a little more leeway. And he said, you're not just going to play him out now because, David, I'm trying to get you somewhere. And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the, the javelin into the wall. Uh, uh, David got away, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. Oh, man, this man is watching David. He got people waiting around his house to take him out. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in a bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And hallelujah. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. And Saul sent messengers again to see David, saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messenger would come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with the pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, why hast thou deceived me so and sent my my uh, sent away my enemy that he is escaped and Michael answered Saul he said unto me let me go why should I kill thee so David fled and escaped and came to Samuel hallelujah to Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him and hallelujah and he and Samuel went and dwelt in and and Noah now we're going to go over into Psalms 59 16 through 17 this was a psalm that was a that is on par with what was going on here this psalm was written during the time that david hallelujah was fleeing from saul because saul was washing him out and saul was trying to kill him in his sleep this psalm say but i was sing of thy power yea i will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning for thou hast been my defense and refuse in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Let me tell you something about David. Hallelujah. When you read up in that song, for those, hallelujah, they can go back, hallelujah, and hear this message. And hallelujah, for those that are in the sanctuary that know where I'm coming from, when you read through that psalms, you see that David was talking to God and he was telling God, I need you to handle my enemies, God. Bloody men that came up against me and they're trying to take me out, God. They've been waiting me out, God, and trying to take me out, God, even when I was in my own home, God. He said, God, they're walking around like dogs in that bar barking at me. They're letting me know that they want to come after me. He said mighty men have rose, hallelujah, rised up against me to take me out. Hallelujah. But David, when he got down into the 16th verse and 17th verse, he said, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy. Hallelujah. But he said, because of all of that, but I will sing of thy 
I, I will sing of thy script, God, because, God, you was with me. Yeah, I will sing a lot of thy mercy, God, because, God, you made a way of escape for me every time. And then let me tell you how, hallelujah, God gave him a way of escape. Hallelujah, God placed some people in his lives that was able to give him some insight on how to get away from the enemy. And it's great when God, hallelujah, put great leaders in your life and good people in your life that are full of the Holy Ghost. They can help you out along the way when you're going through some stuff. Because let me tell you something about this devil. This devil does not like the anointing that God has placed on your life. He does not like the resemblance of God that's starting to be formed in your life because you have decided to commit yourself unto the Lord and you have decided to let the Lord order your steps. But let me tell you something. Don't let the enemy stop you. Just let the devil push you right into a praise and let him, hallelujah, call you to magnify your God through the midst of your adversity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can look at the story, hallelujah. We can look at this story and we can say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Saul was operating in a spirit of jealousy and yes he was. But let me tell you something that's a little more deeper to this jealousy. Anything that comes from the evil place, it comes from the devil. Anything that is out of, hallelujah, the art of God is from the devil. And a spirit of jealousy is nothing but something that comes straight from the pit of hell. And let me tell you how, hallelujah, Saul was operating operating in the same pattern of Cain. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about Abel. He gave God an excellent sacrifice and his heart was pure. But Cain, hallelujah, heart was not in the right place and he hated that God was using him and not using him. So he decided to go against his brother and take him out. And that same spirit was operating upon Saul. And it's the same spirit that's operating in the devil. He knows that he got kicked out of heaven and he can't get back in. And he sees that you're being conformed to the very image of Christ. And he hates that. He hates, hallelujah, that you're looking more like God. That every time you pray, you get deeper and connected to God. He sees the anointing on your life. He really don't know where you're going, but he sees your potential. And let me tell you something about Saul. He seen David's potential because Saul killed thousands, but David killed his thousand and when the devil see your potential he'll come after you and he will hit you hard but let the devil push you into a praise let the devil push you into a place where you can magnify the God of your salvation where you can say that the Lord is my script and the Lord is my mercy and the Lord is my defense oh in the God of my mercy Many are the afflictions of the righteous, and David went through many afflictions. They, hallelujah, Saul tried to take him out with a gavelin before, and God, hallelujah, and God, he tried to take David out again with a gavelin. He tried to press him through the wall. He tried to come after him while he was asleep, and even when David went into the cave, hallelujah, Saul was still on his trail. Hallelujah. Saul tried to run David all out through the country of Jerusalem. Even David had to go into the camp of the Philistine just to get away but God was ordering his steps God was making a way for him and he went through many afflictions and there's many afflictions that the people of God are going through and there's the things so let me tell you something if the devil see you pushing into God he got to never say oh God oh God oh God if the devil see you pushing into God what he's going to do he's going to come after you he does not want another Christ-like. He don't want another anointed one on the scene because he know if you get into your place for God and if you get into the calling that God has called you to and you show yourself a worthy vessel as David did, he know that you're going to wreak havoc on his kingdom. Like I said, he don't know, hallelujah, the end of a thing, but he see your potential. The devil don't know exactly what God has told to you because you know a man, when he's speaking tongues, he edifies himself and he talks directly to God and the devil can't understand it. But the devil sure can hear your conversation and he sure can hear your testimony. He has said, uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Jonathan, a good friend. He was older than David, more experienced. He knew his father. He told David, look, man, I don't know what's going on with my daddy, man, but, man, you need to hide out. You need to play it safe. I don't need you coming around. 
Hallelujah. I need you to change up your tactics, man. You just can't be around them like that. And it's good when you got people around you that will talk to you and let you know, hey, man, you need to take it easy. Hallelujah. Settle yourself. Hallelujah. Let me give you some wisdom on how to operate because you can't really operate in this territory like that because if you do, the enemy going to try to take you out. He's going to try to blindside you. He's going to try to hit you with a sucker punch. So let me tell you, you need to position yourself where you can be able to know where the attack of the enemy coming from. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Micah, we know her flaws. We know how that she didn't, hallelujah, dislike David when he was praising the Lord and everything. But God used her. God used her. God will put people in your life, hallelujah, to let you know there's, there's evil around. Those that are in the spirit, those that are praying, those that can see things in the spirit, they'll let you know, you know what, hallelujah, sister, you're doing good. Brother, you're doing good. But let me tell you something, be, hallelujah, be aware, hallelujah, take heed lest you fall. Huh? The devil's on your track. Huh? Hallelujah, let me let you know something. You need to make a move now. Huh? You need to do something now. You can't stay in the same spot. You need to keep pushing. You need to do something more. Huh? She let him down huh? out of the window at night. Huh? She told him, you need to go to another place. You can't stay right here because you stay in this place. The devil gonna take you out. You need to get into a place where you can have an experience. You need to get out there and you need to step out on faith and let God order your steps. You need to let God make you and mold you. You need to let God show you that you can make it on his script and God will give you all the resources that you need because David got all the resources that he need. He gave a mighty man of valor to go with him. He gave him something. He gave him food. He gave him good companions. God gave him everything he needed. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's so crazy, the enemy. You might not have nobody physically coming up against you and trying to kill you. But let me tell you something about the devil. The devil knows that he's the prince of the power of the air. And he loves to travel through the airways and he loves to pick up on the frequency that's in the air. And he knows exactly where you at. Huh? And he knows exactly what you have been through before because he has studied you. And he knows your hallelujah, your ways, and he knows what can get to you. And when the devil knows that you're in a place where you're trying to submit to God, and he see a vulnerable place huh? in the midst of your tiredness, in the midst of your tiredness, when your body is weak, the devil said, I got a time to bring up something. And he'll play in your mind. It's the mind. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Don't, don't get to the point where you let whatever he brings to you just get you so down and out. You got to be like David. But, yeah, you brought that towards my mind. Yes, I felt that. Yes, you, 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 you hit me with a, a uppercut. Yeah, I was I'm not expecting. Yes, you pushed me. Yeah, it was it was a force yeah it was vicious how you did me I was not expecting it but God but God he still loved me he's still the lover of my soul he's still the one that washes me when I lay down and he knows my uprising he knows my down sinning he knows me he hears my cry he knows my tears he has them in a vow of a bottle he knows everything about me and he said that I'm his own and devil you can say what you want to do and just like the devil he's the accuser of the brother he's jealous of you he constantly telling God that you ain't nothing he constantly trying to push you into a place, hallelujah, that he know that you are vulnerable in. But you got to tell God, I don't care what the devil bring. You are my mercy. You are my defense. And you are my God. And I'm going to praise you. I let the devil push me right into you, God. I let the devil push me to my knees. I let the devil push me closer to God. Because God, you are the source of my spirit. source of my strength Lord oh it don't matter what come our way God you are my strength Lord 
It don't matter what the devil brings towards me, God. I know where to go to. I know where to go to. I know where to go to. I can go to Jesus and he will answer prayer. I can go to Jesus and he'll lift up my bow down head. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith ourselves have been comforted of God. Let the devil push you right into a praise. And when you learn God no more, and when you know that you made it out by the grace of God, you can come to those that are going through in their mind. You can come to those that are going through in their body. And you can say, I know when I was going through, but I got in contact with a man named Jesus. And Jesus made everything all right. He changed my life around. He gave me peace in my mind. He healed my body. He established my goings. He put me on a firm foundation. I know you're going through. I know it's rocky. I know it's shaky. But the God of all comfort, comfort me, and he can comfort you. Hallelujah. Rise on your feet tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to those that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, hallelujah. Oh God, oh God, for those, oh God, that this word has touched God to their core, God. Oh God, for those, oh God, that are crying out now, God, because of all the anguish that the devil was bringing against them, Lord. Oh God, right now, God, let the spirit of praise, God, come forth out of their belly, God. Cause them, Lord God, to give you a sacrifice of praise. Have them praise through that pain, God. Have them praise through that misery, God. Have them praise through that disappointment, God. Have them praise through that loneliness, God. Have them praise, God. Let them magnify you, God. Let them give you glory. No, oh God, cause them to lift their hands and give your glory in the name of Jesus, God, because your praise and the heavens, the praises of your people, Lord. Move, God. Meet them right where they at, God, and change their life, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For those that are not saved, God, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Oh, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, change their life. Get them a born again experience. Hallelujah. That don't fit every generation power in the name of Jesus Christ. And we give you the glory and honor for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's anybody in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. On tonight, they just need some strength. Hallelujah. They just need some strength. Let me tell you something about God. He'll meet you in your lowest. And some people don't understand what you go through. Because it's your battle. Many people didn't understand what David was going through. Because God was making him. They didn't understand the intensity that the enemy was putting on him. Because God was making him. But you know what you're going through. And God knows exactly what you're going through. And he know why he did it. Like my brother said on Hollywood the other night. It's a light affliction. It's a light affliction. But something behind it is more weighty. There's a glory behind it that's more weighty. There's something behind it. Hallelujah. There's more potent than what you're going through. Hallelujah. There's anybody on tonight. Hallelujah. That needs anything from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that be all, praise the Lord. We're going to lift our hand for a mass prayer. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray right now, God, that you just continue to strengthen us through and by your word. 
Your word is quickening. Your word is powerful. Oh, God, your word brings life to us, God. In the name of Jesus, your word brings life, God, to dead situations, God. Oh, God, let this word, oh, God, marinate in our souls. Let this word, oh, God, cause us, Lord God, to praise you, God, even the more, God. No matter the offense, no matter what the devil's bringing up against us, no matter what the accusation, the hallelujah, the accuser, the brother is bringing up towards us, God. Let us magnify you the more. Let us give you a sacrifice of praise, God, with the fruit of our lips. Help us push past what we feel and give you glory. Help us push past what we feel and give you honor, God. God, for those, oh God, that hallelujah, that allow the enemy to keep them at home, oh God. Oh God, give them a drive, God, to come to the house of God, because in your house, God, is everything we need. There's revelation here. There's confidence here. There's fruit here. There's everything we need here. There's food for our soul here. There's growth here. There's everything we need is in the house of God because God you made it like that. This is a house of prayer and God this is the place that we receive our strength God. So continue God to strengthen us God every time we come through these doors God continue to build us up God. It doesn't matter what we go through God you're greater than all that and we magnify you God for who you are in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah.